I'm really excited to give you my basic workflow. This is from my new course, Advancing Your Photography. Hey, be sure to subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. And here's my basic workflow. Okay, I'm gonna take another photograph, completely different photograph, and walk you through all the steps I took with that last image. Okay, this was one that I used in the AYP book under Getting Know Your Camera as a Close Friend. Let's just open it. This is, we're in the grid view here. I'm gonna double click it. Now we're in the loop. Okay, so I have previously processed this, but I'm gonna reprocess it. So I'm gonna hit D, develop. And over here you can see in the history, I reset everything. I created a virtual copy, I reset it. So it's back to what it looked like when it came out of the camera. So starting up here, I have checked the triangles on the darks. We're not really losing anything really important. But on the brights, you can see we're losing detail here in the sun. So we can fix that right away as I did before. I'm gonna just pull the highlights down until that goes away. Okay, which I'd want to do anyway. Not too much because there's not a lot of light going on here. The light was coming through Holly who is silhouetted. I may want to take a look at the shadows. Let's just see. I don't want to open that up too much because I kind of like her being silhouetted. So let's just leave it. I did bring it up to 32, so that's quite a bit. Over here at the histogram, you can see everything's pretty bunched over on the dark side. That's because, look, it was taken almost at sunset. It's a dark image. If we look at our white balance, we've got various choices here. And we could, you know, sometimes it's kind of fun to just scroll through them. That's auto, daylight, okay, cloudy, no, absolutely not, shade, no. Okay, tungsten, obviously that's not gonna work at all. But you can see what's happening here. Fluorescent, yeah, no thank you. A flash, nah, not so much. And let's go back to as shot. Now, I don't have anything really gray. I could maybe get away with this area up here and see what happens. And as I'm moving my eyedropper, notice what's happening over here in our navigator window is we're getting a preview of what this is going to look like. So if I took that section, that's going to make it really blue. This isn't bad. Now I take that back. That's no good at all. Okay, so I'm going to go back to as shot. I don't frankly see a lot of changes I need to make on the white balance. It's really warm, but that's what was happening. We we're in the golden hour. So let's just leave that be. Exposure, I might want to bump up just a little bit, just a tiny bit there, you know, hardly anything. Contrast, I'm not going to touch. We've already adjusted highlights, shadows. Let's do our whites. We can move that a little bit. Not too much because we're going to hit the sun there. It did go up a little bit. The blacks, it's pretty black already, but let's see how far we can go there. Okay. Now that's brought out a lot of the colors and the tones already. The tone refers to how light or dark it is. Your exposure, your contrast, which I seldom move. I don't really like to move that contrast slider because I feel like I can get a much better, more detailed and fine-tuned effect by moving these sliders. So we've gotten these all adjusted. Presence here refers to the distinctive qualities of the image, and that could be what we talked about, the texture. I'm gonna move that up a little bit. So notice what it's doing to the ocean. See how blurry it is there when it's all the way over and the ocean texture comes up? I can move that pretty high without things being distorted. Now I am getting a little bit of that sun losing some of the detail there. So what I'll do is I'll bring that up, but I'm gonna adjust the highlights down even a little bit more to fix that. Okay, we've got that nice starburst coming through there. Clarity, I don't even think I'm gonna do much more than maybe to about there. That's changing some of these midtones here you can see on the histogram this is not a beautiful hill here mainly because look 
we're dealing with a lot of darks here. It's very dark. It's almost sunset, guys. So it is what it is. And what I'm visualizing here, I want this image to have a lot of color in it. I obviously love the starburst. I shot it that way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn that off. We're not going to worry about that. Dehaze, let's just see what it does. I don't really think I'm going to go, yeah, that really is cool. So if we get it all hazy, yeah, we don't want that. I don't really think, anytime you want to reset one of these sliders to zero, just double click and it goes right back where it belongs. I see no reason to move the dehaze. Eh, brings out a little blue here, just a little bit. I wouldn't go any farther than that. Her hair is beautifully backlit, that's cool. Vibrance, we can move that, but I don't really think we're going to see any reason to change. Now, I'm going to double click that, put it back where it belongs. Okay, now before we leave here, let's do a little cropping. And I want to change two things. So first of all, let me get out of this. Notice the horizon's a little crooked. So let's fix that right off the bat. Nothing like a crooked ocean here. We just stretch that out and when you get to the other side you let go boom now we have a level ocean horizon so other than that I think I'm gonna crop it a little bit where I don't need so much space behind her but I want to leave space open in front of her because whenever a person's looking in a certain direction, remember what David Smith mentioned this, leave space where they're looking. So I want to bring that space where she, we don't need to see her behind her. We're going to close that off a little bit. All right, so now that we have our crop the way we want it, just hit enter and voila, that makes you a new sized image. Now notice I have it set over here at fit, which means it's all fitting within the frame in the develop module. But before we leave this photograph or any photograph, you want to check it out at least 100%. Now, as soon as I hit that, notice we're getting this upper part. You navigate by moving this rectangle around. But let's take a look at this. And we can see a couple of problems right off. So there are some spots here. These are sensor spots. There's at least these two. Let's deal with those. And I want to show you, we're going to use the spot removal tool right here. That's right next to the crop tool where we just were. Click on that. This is a really super handy tool you're going to want to know about using all the time. We're going to keep feather at zero and opacity 100 for now. And we have it on healing. So Lightroom is really smart. Make this really as small as it needs to be. You don't want it to be like huge if I'm covering this area. So I'm just covering that spot. So I'm going to make it about this little bit bigger than the spot. Click on it. And what Lightroom does is it will try to find an, a matching area to cover that with. Now all you have to do is move over to the side and that those two circles will go away. And it actually did a great job. If it didn't, I can move this around because this is what's going to match to that area. Now, in this case, it's all kind of coming from this more or less the same area. So it's doing fine there. But sometimes you have to really move it around to get a good match. It actually did best with the original one. So we're just going to go back here. Let it be right there. So this one is the spot removal circle, which is the, where you are removing the spot. And this is the source where it's drawing from. And again, you may have to move that around to get a good match. But as you can see, when I move off there, it pretty much disappears. Now there was one other one here I saw somewhere. And by the way, if you have trouble identifying these things, go to 300. As you can see, boy, that really shows the noise, doesn't it? And I usually like to scan over the whole image before I am satisfied I've got everything at 300. 
But for now, I'm sure there's other work that could be done as far as finding spots, but that gives you the basic idea of what you're going to use, the healing, and you're going to remove it by just placing it on there and then finding a good source spot. Oh, there's another one. Okay, see if we talk long enough, we'll find it right there. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Same thing. It found a pretty good match. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. But before you end off, really make sure, go to, I would go to 300% really scan the whole image. We're going to go to 100 right now, which will really show us what the problem is at this point. So we're done with that. I'm going to click on that and that gets rid of that. I hope you like that short segment out of my course. You know, that's not all the bells and whistles in Lightroom by a long shot. Again, it's just the basics. And I'd already been talking about some other things, so you get it. If you want the full information, you got to get my course. It's really good. It will give you a complete understanding of the cycle of photography, and we have it on special. All right, so listen, please do subscribe. If you haven't already done so, enable the bell. Like, leave your comments. We will respond to them. And don't forget, remember to get out and capture your own images of life.